You know what? Let's just skip the middlemen. Support me, caffeine. Because I need a sponsor, and why not just go directly to the source? So, support me, magical caffeine fairies. I will sell out. And, you know, that way I don't have to reference one specific caffeine. I can just be represented by caffeine in general, and wherever caffeine comes from. I assume it's a magical fountain somewhere. Anyways, it is Wednesday, which just means it's time for the RPG tabletop role-playing game news of the week, crowdfunding of the week, and generally catching up on whatever's going on because, oh boy, has a lot of stuff happened in the last 48 hours. Jesus, sweet mother of toast. I swear all I gotta do is sit still for a minute and this stuff finish writes itself. Anyways, before we move on to the controversy of the day, Let's take a look at what's going on in the amazing world of crowdfunding. As you know, I am a huge fan of crowdfunding because it allows small press companies to get their stuff out there. And, um, you know, it's a great way for us to see stuff that we might not, not see because of the monopoly of Wizards of the Coast and Pezo. And plus, crowdfunding is another great way because you can put something up on crowdfunding, Kickstarter, and if it doesn't make any money, you'd be like, okay, there's no target audience. I didn't waste any money printing this out. Now I know I need to go back to the drawing board and reconfigure it and then put it out again and see if there's a target audience. So really, there are just so many great things about crowdfunding Kickstarter. Um, anyways, enough about me. Let's see what's going on in the world. Okay, we have from a company called WebDM and 2C Gaming, World of the Web DM Weird Wastelands for Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition, of course. Why? Why? Uh, so basically... This is a uh, 5e quasi-post-apocalypse, magic apocalypse type of thing. Ultraviolet grasslands, arcane punk setting for 5e that... Okay. Uh, it's, well, at least it's... I mean, it's only asking $55 for pledge. Wow. Yeah. No. Just... No, okay. Whatever. From... Eventar Games for 5th edition. We have The Wanderer's Guide to Merchants and Magic. Uh, so it's a book about magic items, magic economy, and magic people who buy and sell magic. And magical prices and stuff like that. You get 20 magic shops, 100 magic items, and uh, stuff like that. So if you want to add a few more magic items to your game, there you go. And the ba the most popular pledge for this is fifteen dollars. From awfully queer heroes, we have the Sunblade subclasses, spells, and pantheon for Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition. Looking for a boatload of new five E options? This is a uh, yeah. I don't uh, yeah okay. I don't know why it's called awfully queer heroes unless the producers are all LGBTQT. Uh, and I'm not sure what the Sunblade pantheon is. I. Is that a new class? A new I don't know. I've, I've completely lost, have no idea what's going on in 5e anymore. But if you want to look up a boatload of new options for 5e, uh, check it out. The standard pledge for this is $18. From James Pease, we have Blood, Sweat, and Seal, a sword and sorcery tabletop role-playing game for Fudge. Wow, there's a name I haven't heard in a while. Frickin' Fudge. I, I didn't even know that was it around anymore. I thought Fudge had become fate, but I guess somebody is trying to bring Fudge back. Um, so this is a dark fantasy RPG that uses Fudge, but also, I guess, fate, because fate is the evolution of Fudge. Um, it's a core rule book, so apparently this James guy is trying to bring Fudge back. Uh, if you're not familiar with Fudge, without going into too much, it was a game like GURPS, but its initial concept was we only have one stat, hit points, life, and then you can add or subtract whatever stats you want, but in Fudge, there was really only one stat, hit points, and then you could build the system the way you wanted. So it was a unique take on the GURPS idea, and it eventually, post um, Forge, became what we know now as Fate. Uh, it's a long story, which not as part of this vlog. From twelve fold work punch, pu sorry, from twelve fold works publishing, we have Pink Cloud, an adventure game for friends of Bill, based on Diego Diego Nojoina's Lost in a Fantasy World. Fantasy World, Diego Nojoina. Uh, 
Uh, N O G U E I R A, Nogoria. I apologize, Diego, if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. It's not rate B being racist, it's me being mint, uh, having a learning disability. Uh, the $48 is the minimum pledge for this. This is a, a RPG about based around the gameable version of the 12 step program. You set in a fantasy world, you're what? It's a, co it's a corporate cooperative fantasy role-playing game. You're trying to get back home, and the way you do it is by going through a D&D 12-step program. And I don't know who Friends of Bill are. I guess that's a 12-step program. So I guess Lost in the Fantasy World is a comic book that deals with this uh, idea of being trapped in a D&D universe and the only way to get out of it is going through a 12-step D&D pro type fantasy program. That is either the most weirdest, obscure concept for a game or one of the most awesome concepts for a game. I mean, yeah, there's there's things you could do with, you know, having to escape Dungeons & Dragons cartoon and the only way you could escape is by going through a 12-step program and admitting to yourself what a horrible, awful person your player character really is. I, I don't know. There, there, there could be some wheels there. I might want to have to follow this one and see what happens with it. Uh, from JVC Perry and Nord Games, we have Isle of the Dreaded Accursed for Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. Basic pledge, $50. This is a sort book. Uh, so, yeah, it's basically, I guess, their take on the Island of Dread type story. You know, player characters trapped on island, gotta do stuff. Uh, lost temples, pirate zombies, usual islandy stuff. I love island adventures. From the Brain Trust, we have Campfire. $40 basic pledge. This is basically, are you afraid of the dark creep show using the fiasco rules? Oh, nice to see somebody reminding the fiasco rules. Um, so it's a horror type role playing game. Um, are you afraid of the dark? So, you know, no stuff like that. Uh, if your fiasco is a great game, if you've never played it. Um, so that's fun. From John Power Jr., we have Weird Science Issue 2. This is a RPG magazine uh, that covers um, BX and OSR type games like Thirsty Sword Lesbians, uh, BX, OSR, stuff like that. I believe um, DM Bloodworth has done a review of this, so check it out on his channel. Link down below. So it's nice to see, you know, magazines always out there supporting the hobby and supporting other things besides just one. From Legendary Games, we have Asian Monsters, 90 Magnificent Monsters for D&D. So this is 112 pages featuring 90 creatures inspired by Asian and Pacific cultures. I thought we weren't doing this anymore. Wasn't this the whole big thing about last year, about appropriating cultures? But And, and so unless this was written, researched, Created by all the art done by a totally 100% Asian production company, you're going to get in trouble because this was the whole thing that started the whole crap last year about racial, cultural appropriation in role-playing games, but without actually giving the culture the, the justice it deserves and actually using people from the culture to create the culture. Remember, we did, went through this with Oriental Adventures, even though, of course, Oriental Adventures was written, play-tested by, and consulted by, on by people from of Asian descent. So, but so yeah, Asian monsters from Legendary Games, guys. Wh uh, what are you thinking? I mean, this is literally the whole reason why all this crap started, is because of Oriental Adventures and doing Asian themed racial appropriation type games, which of course Oriental Adventures wasn't, but still, it did cause a whole boatload of crap. So, what the hell are you thinking? Unless, of course, you're hoping to restart the boatload of crap. I don't know. And just in case I haven't mentioned it enough, Awfully Cheerful Engine, an RPG action comedy from Ian Publishing, is still being kickstarted and has almost reached the first million mark. And dear God in heaven, if this game fails after all the advertising Ian Publishing has put, put into it, what a quote-unquote fiasco that would be, but it would be ironically funny. So that's it for the Kickstarter news today, uh, I think. Oh, we also have Pulp Cthulhu is being reprinted and being Kickstarter. So if you're 
a fan of Call of Cthulhu, but I want to play a little bit more, you know, we actually have a chance of beating these guys, Call of Cthulhu, set in the Pulp era. Check out the reprint of Pulp Cthulhu being playtested now. If any of these sound interesting to you, walk, don't run to your nearest friendly local game store. That's Sess Games and Anime here in Ventura, and ask them to look into this and order it for you. Um, the only one that really sounds interesting to me is Pink Cloud from 12 Fold Works Publishing, because something about the idea of role playing through a fantasy version of a 12 step program sounds interesting. I don't know. I don't know if I could do it, but it definitely sounds interesting. Uh, if you appreciate this content and want to see more, comment down below. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Help me hit 500 subs by August 4th, and we'll do something crazy. Uh, please consider supporting me using the Ko-Fi link down below so I can buy, you know, a new computer, new camera, uh, more caffeine, stuff like that. Until then, I will talk to you later, Steve.